It's Steve Duval from Thor Motor Coach, and I am glad you are with us because today we are going to get to know your Axis and Vegas RUVs. So we're going to start up front. This is the new Ford E-Series chassis, and it has a brand new V8 motor. This kicks out 350 horsepower, 468 pound-feet of torque. A little bullnose key like this is how you unlock the hood, lift it up, and down here you have your radiator. You can see your horns, your dipstick is here. You do have uh, your windshield washer fluid here, so this is where you're going to open this to uh, maintain some of your engine. We'll get around to the storage bay. We'll show you where the fuses are in case that you blow a fuse for, say, a mirror or any of the other components inside. That's located in one of the storage bays on the side. We will show you that as we work our way around the outside. We're going to talk about everything. We're going to talk about storage, electrical, sewage, how to set up camp. So let's head on over to this side. Working our way down the campsite of your motorhome, we'll start here with the mirror. You can adjust these from the inside. They are power operated. They are also heated. Down here is a manual adjustment. And right here is the side view camera monitor that when you turn on your directionals on either side, you'll be able to see a nice clear picture of what is off to your side as you get ready to make that turn. These windows do open on the inside. There are privacy curtains that come around here. We'll show you how to operate those when we move inside. And we're gonna start by opening our storage bays. You have a little key with you. That is what unlocks these, but a couple of neat features about these storage bays. One, they are gonna hold up for a very, very long time. They're made out of a durable rotocast material. Each one has a light that you can use from your Rapid Camp Plus, which we will show you how to work, which you can use from your phone or your tablet, whatever. It works with Apple and Android devices. Uh, the other thing I really like about these is they have a drain plug in here. So you pull out the drain plug, okay? So you've gone somewhere, it's really muddy. You got muddy shoes or boots or clothes or just something wet. You can go ahead, pull the drain plug out, rinse these out really easy. This one has a little bit of pass-through, which would be great for maybe some fishing poles something like that, maybe some, uh, some, some baseball bats for a long weekend at the ballpark. We have our entry door right over here. A couple of uh, locks on this entry door I do want to point out. It is two separate keys. Down here, this key locks the handle. Okay, so this is only going to lock the handle. And the bigger key will lock the deadbolt. So if you want maximum security, go ahead and lock the deadbolt when you go away for the day. You can lock and unlock those uh, for the night, but we'll go ahead and unlock the door. I just locked myself out. <laughs> that's all right, there we go. Now I'm in, that's how, that's how good they work. That's how good they work. So as we come around to here, uh, there is no step that comes out just right in. Uh, this here, you can go ahead and open this. You're gonna find your uh, chassis batteries in here. If you need to disconnect them when you winterize, that's where you would do that if you want to replace them. The first thing you do want to do, though, uh, before anything else, uh, is turn on your battery disconnect switch, okay? This is going to fire up the power in your motorhome, the 12-volt power, so you'll be able to operate your lights. Turn it on and leave it on the entire trip, okay? You want to make sure that that is on because what that is going to do is the chassis batteries are hooked up to your house batteries. So when you're driving down the road, your house batteries are gonna get a charge, okay? When you're plugged into shore power, your house batteries are gonna get a charge. If that switch is off, they will not charge, all right? So make sure that you keep that in the on position the entire time. Turn it off when you're gonna store your motor home, but keep in mind if you, if you do that and turn it completely off, there are little items in here, clocks and whatnot, that have a small drain on your battery. So you will drain your batteries dry unless you disconnect them. And again, you can disconnect them right under there. And when we go over to the power side, I'll show you the little adapter you can use to plug into just an outlet uh, where you store your motor home, and that way you can keep the batteries charged. Uh, there's also a solar controller in here, 100 watts of solar is optional. If you'd like to add more panels, it is pre-wired. There is strapping up on top, real easy to add panels, but 100 watts of solar is an option on the Axis and the Vegas. We have frameless windows out here. These are really nice. They open, I like to say awning style, so they'll open like this, which is nice. Um, if it's raining, you can open those and get a breeze. I do want to show you one more thing here as well. I look up. If it is raining, you don't want your awning out, but on a sunny day like today, why not put it out and get some shade? You're going to use Rapid Camp Plus, which on this motorhome is located here. It's going to be different uh, depending on what you do, but if you want to put your awning out, you simply go to the awnings tab and you hit 
extend and hold it down and your armless awning out she comes and this is a great feature when you want a little bit of shade out here if it's light misting and you want to sit outside right under the awning it is recommended when you go away for an excursion go ahead put your awning in also at night that way you prevent any damage if the wind would kick up if an unexpected storm would come through and you put your awning out just like that just like that really really easy to put it in just reverse the procedure, you're gonna hold the retract button. It's nice, it's a, because it's an armless awning, when it is out, you don't have any poles or rods or anything like that coming down that you're gonna hit on your head. There's also an LED light strip that we can go ahead and we can turn on, and I will show you how to do that uh, right here in just a minute, as soon as the awning comes on and my finger is off the button. The nice thing is about the LED light strip, you can use it whether the awning is out or in. It makes a very nice night light, lights up the whole side of your coach. And I will go to the light feature right here and I will find my awning light. And there it is. And there it is on. So you can see even with the awning in, still makes a nice night light for you. Moving down, a couple of 110 volt outlets when you are plugged into shore power or your generator is running, you can use these, plug in, you got a table set up, plug in a blender, make some smoothies, make some delicious margaritas, whatever it is you want. Another large storage bay, this one is great for your camping chairs or whatever else you wanna throw in here. Again, that nice durable rotocast. It does have its own light that we'll show you how to use from Rapid Camp Plus, your phone or your tablet. Moving on down, a couple other things we wanna talk about. This is your fridge access if you need to uh, get into visit your to visit your fridge. If you need to uh, service your fridge, these little tablets pop out. You can go in that way. We'll visit the fridge a little later because uh, it's where you're going to keep all your delicious food. Your furnace is right here. Okay, not much you need to do here. This panel is attached. One thing to keep note of because this is on the campsite, and again, it's going to vary on your floor plan. This does get hot when your furnace is running, so make sure that you keep uh, note of that. A lot of people, when they store it, like to cover this so little critters or bugs or bees, whatever, don't uh, get inside of there. Straight down below, our exterior propane connection. You do have an on and off valve, and this is great for attaching gas grills, or you can attach a, a portable fire pit. A lot of campgrounds now are not allowing fire pits because of the firewood and they don't want people bringing wood in so you can't have those but you could uh, most certainly take and hook up a gas fire pit to that. Uh, one thing to keep in mind though that this is regulated okay so if there's a regulator on your grill or your other device remove the regulator from that device not from here. This is your tankless hot water and this is where all your hot water is going to come from. We'll show you how to turn it on and adjust the temperature when we head inside. In the event this isn't working, there is an on-off switch. You also have a fuse out here as well. Uh, you can read the entire manual on this. Really not much you need to do with this, um, but enjoy all the hot water. Right here is your uh, freshwater tank fill. What you want to do is remove this cap and then take your hose and don't use the hose that you're going to use to sanitize your tanks with or anything and you're going to fill up water from here. Sometimes campgrounds will have a, a place you can do this as well. Keep filling it up. There's a little vent here on the side. And then when that water starts to trickle out, of, trickle out of there, you will know that your tank is filled and it's something you'll need to keep in mind when we talk about towing, how much uh, you can put in here. Right down below, tires. We cannot stress enough the importance of maintaining your tires, all right? So they wear evenly, so they give you better traction, so they give you better fuel mileage. You're gonna wanna check the tire pressure. Uh, check it daily if you're gonna do a lot of long drives. We do have valve stem extenders, so you can check the inside tire. The last thing you wanna do is have the inside tire and the outside tire at different inflation uh, PSI. Uh, they could potentially rub together and you could end up in a bad situation. So make sure that you are maintaining your tires. The proper PSI is printed on the labels that uh, you see here. So make sure you're looking at those and you're maintaining your tires and you're doing it on a regular basis. And you're not checking them hot. You don't wanna pull into camp and then check your tire pressure. That is not the way to do it. Check it in the morning before you leave while it hasn't been driven on. Also, as you are over here on the campsite, Take note of where your exhaust is. This is the engine exhaust. It will get very hot. You don't want to bump your leg on it. Um, after a while, obviously it cools down, but after you're pulling the camp, make sure that you are careful and uh, aware of that. And finally, on this side, 
We do have another storage bay. This is a very large pass-through bay when we go to the back and to the driver's side, we'll open those, but uh, a lot, a lo I mean, you can fit everything in here, golf clubs and maybe skis or whatever it is you want right in here for your adventures. Now we're gonna walk around back, we're gonna talk about the ladder, and we're gonna talk about the importance of the information when it comes to towing. On the back side of your Axis or Vegas, you are going to have a couple of things going on here. You have your LED tail lights. You can put your license plate right there. You do have a ladder, and this is how you access the roof. So when you go up to the roof to activate your WineGuard Connect 4G hotspot ex um, Wi-Fi extender, which we'll talk about when we move inside, you'll go up to the roof that way to put in your SIM card. Uh, you can do your maintenance up there on the roof if you need to, uh, to clean it. And there's a maintenance schedule. We'll talk about warranties and maintenance here at the uh, end of this video. Uh, but this ladder takes you up to the roof and it is not something that you want the kids to be climbing. I know if you're going to take this to an event and you want the best vantage point, this isn't for climbing up and setting up lawn chairs. It's not a patio up there. Just like you wouldn't use the roof of your home as a patio. Just make sure that you're doing your maintenance on there and stay off of it unless you need to. Great storage bay back here. Pass-through goes from left side to right side in the middle, so you can fit just so much into the storage bay. Again, it has its own light. And we need to talk a little bit about towing. We have a lot to talk about here uh, when it comes to towing because you can see there's a warning sticker here giving you a little information. Uh, you do have your two inch receiver here. You have a seven pin connector. You have a four pin connector. And if you want to attach a trailer brake controller, you can do that. For a complete guide to towing, we do have a video for you, a very uh, informative, in-depth video, depending on how you want to use your motorhome. But quickly, uh, a couple of numbers that you need to know before you tow is your gross vehicle weight, okay? So this is going to be uh, the curb weight of the motorhome, your cargo, your water, the propane, your passengers, okay? You're going to need to know those numbers. Then you're going to need to know your gross combined weight rating, and that is everything. Your people, your passengers, everything we talked about along with the tow vehicle. And we do have information on that on ThorMotorCoach.com on the specs page of our website. Uh, this yellow sticker, that is your OCCC, the Occupant and Cargo Carrying Capacity. And this is a very important sticker for you to know because it lets you know how much weight you can add. And you can see that it also tells you how much a full tank of water is. So that is something to keep in mind if you are towing is how much water do you want to put into your fresh tank as that does take away from uh, the amount you tow. Your GVWR is another number you need to know. This is the maximum allowable weight of a fully loaded motorhome. That number is printed on a sticker. There are ratings for your axle. There's a 500 pound tongue weight on this. Okay, and that is the amount of trailer, uh, the amount of the trailer's weight that you can get on this. So you take all of these numbers uh, and, and you get your, your motor home weighed to find out how much you can tow. And this is uh, right here, it'll tell you right there, it's an 8,000 pound hitch with a 500 pound tongue rating. This doesn't mean you can tow 8,000 pounds, but we wanted to put a sufficient hitch on here. We didn't want to put a hitch on here uh, for a 3,500 pound hitch and then have you damage anything. So we went up to, to 8,000 pounds, but to find out how much you can tow, it's simply your gross combined weight rating minus your gross vehicle weight. So that's how you figure out how much you can tow again for a deep dive watch the video on uh, towing and cargo capacity. We're gonna go ahead and move around to the driver's side because there is a lot of action over there. So much to talk about over here. We're gonna open all the bays. We're gonna hook up plumbing. We're gonna hook up our city water connection. We're gonna hook up electric. We're gonna flush our tanks. We're gonna fill up with gas. But first, let's go ahead and start right down here with our Onan quiet gas generator. This is really a great feature on this motorhome. 4,000 watts. This is going to power everything that you need inside the coach when you are off the grid. When you're not plugged into shore power, you're going to want to have your generator on. You're going to run your air conditioner, your microwave, your refrigerator. You're going to keep your coach cool. Now, uh, the other thing I like to do with this is even when I'm driving down the road, yes, you can most certainly run that because what that is going to do, that is going to keep your air conditioner on for the passengers inside your living area. Keep them nice and comfortable. It's a uh, maintenance is pretty easy on this. This is all laid out in your owner's manual. There's also a couple of breakers on here. This panel just pops right off. If uh, this isn't starting, go ahead, come out here, pop the panel off and see if it is one of the breakers. You can also start it from here as well. So you can reset the breaker, prime it. You're going to hold it down. The light will glow red. Then you can go ahead and start it. That is how you prime that. 
This is your Onan QG 4000 gas generator, runs right off your tank. Go ahead and make the most of that because it is a great feature to have. Moving up a storage bay. Ooh, this is a this is a big storage bay. We have a lot going on in here. I I put a lot of gear in here. We're going to show you how to use here. Uh, this is your fuel fill. Okay, so when you're pulling pulling in, uh, you're going to want to pull in on your passenger side. One thing to keep in mind when you're driving a motor home and you're looking at the dash, unlike your car where you have the arrow next to the fuel gauge, it's not necessarily going to line up. We go floor plan by floor plan to see what is the most. Uh, accessible to to work with the floor plan. So on this particular motorhome, your fuel fill is here. So let's start pulling out our goods because we have a lot to show you here. All right, we have our black hose, we have our gloves, we have our potable water hose, we have some electrical adapters, and we have another hose. So yeah, a lot of great stuff to talk about here. Let's hook up the power. So okay, we just pulled into camp. We have uh, the generator still running, but we want to get hooked up to electric so we can turn the generator off, save a little bit of gas, and just use the power at the campground we're at. That's why we pay for those campsites, to use the power. This is a 30 amp coach, okay? So here's what you're gonna do. This is a detachable power cord. You can keep it in any bay you want. So take your cord, open, your, open the lid there, you're gonna the, the grooves line up, okay, one has a notch in there, you just kind of line those up, put those in, give it a little twist, and then you spin your locking cap, and now you are secure. You're going to take your other end, okay, which looks like this, over to the campground fuse box. Okay, you're going to have some options, you're going to have, a lot of times it's 110, it's 30, it's 50, whatever they have, you're going to make sure the breakers are off. All your breakers are off, you're going to go ahead, you're going to plug in, then you're going to go ahead and you're going to turn your breakers on. But let's say you are at a campground and the only site they had available was a 50 amp site, and that does happen and you have 30 amps. What, what do you need to do? Just use an adapter. It's going to look something like this, so you can take, you're going to plug the one end into your 30 amp shore power cord, and then you'll plug the other amp into the 50 amp circuit breaker. This is, a, this is a 30, okay, this is a 30. I understand that this isn't the right connection. I'm just using this as a demo. But you'll plug it into the 50. Now, you're not going to blow all the fuses out in here. It's designed to run off of 30 amps. So you'll be able to use that 50 amps into 30 amps. Also, we talked about uh, keeping things hooked up to keep the batteries charged. This is a, a 110, so let's say this is the end of your 30 amp connector. You simply plug that in, you attach that, just like that. Now you can take and you can plug this into an outlet in your garage or wherever you store your motor home and keep a little bit of charge going to uh, your house batteries so they don't go completely dead. Or before you head out on a trip, you want to get that refrigerator running, you can go ahead and do that as well. So that's how you hook up your electric. A couple other things to talk about out here. While you're out there hooking up electric and you want cable TV and the campground offers it, this is your coax. You spin your coax right here. You run it uh, from here to your campground and then you go in and you can scan your TV and we're going to show you how to do that once we head inside. Moving over here, we have a city water connection and we have our outdoor shower. So if you are connecting to the city water, this is the hose you're going to want to use. Simply pull off the plug, twist that on and then run that into the spigot at the campground. A lot of people like to use those filters in between the two. You're more than welcome to. They're pretty inexpensive. Uh, you can replace those and you turn on your water. Now you have water flowing into your motor home. You don't need to use your water pump if you're running off of the city water connection. If you are using the tanks that you have filled up that we showed you how to fill up, all you need to do is turn the water pump on if you don't have city water and that is how you get water flowing through your motor home. Let me slide this down a little bit. We have an exterior shower, which will probably come in handy as we head over here. Down here is just access to, uh, to your tank. And yeah, I'll, I'll show you that here, if you'd like to see. Just some, just some tank, tank access. So there you go. OK, that's your black tank. You can go ahead and shut that. We'll just keep this open, keep this open, and show you how to drain your tank. So we're going to slide over here. 
All right, so this bay contains your tank flush here, your black tank, your gray tank. This is how this works out. Your black tank is your sewage. This is everything from your toilet. Your gray tank, that is from your shower, your sinks. What you do here first is make sure you have a pair of gloves. You're gonna wanna put on some gloves for this job. Now remember, this is a new motor home. We do test the tanks here uh, before they leave. So if a little water comes out, know that that was just because we were testing the tanks. All right, so there's a little cap on here. You're gonna unscrew the cap. This is on a, the valve actually swivels up and down. It makes it a whole lot easier to hook up. So you get your tank out of the tub. I, I would recommend keeping it in a tub like that just because it just keeps things a little bit clean in your storage bay. You run this up and under. Go ahead and lock that into place. Okay, now you can take and push that valve right back down. You're gonna take this, walk this over to wherever the campground is, put that right into the uh, outlet there. This is an extra long hose. A lot of people will take, you can lock this up when you're done, but a lot of people will buy those uh, accordion things to make sure it runs downhill, like the old saying, so you can go ahead and do that as well. Now, when you are draining your tanks, the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna wanna go ahead and you're gonna pull your black tank. You're gonna let everything from your black tank just run right down the hose, right into the campground. When that is done, and you'll know when it stops, you'll go ahead and pull your gray tank. You're gonna let the gray tank drain. Now, the reason we do it in this order is because this is sewage, you want this to go first. You want the sewage to, to run out, then your gray tank, which is cleaner water, will go ahead and flush a lot of that out and through. When you're done, close your black tank, close your gray tank. You're gonna take and you're gonna disconnect. All right, lift your valve up. Now, here's what you need to do. And this, is, this can be, because there's still gonna be a little water in here, make sure you don't quite throw this into the bin just yet. Hold it like this, all right? Walk over to your exterior shower. Turn that on. Go ahead and wash that out. A lot of times campgrounds will have uh, something for that as well. If you're at a dump station, just like this, you walk this right up and everything will go out and into the tank. Then you can go ahead, put your hose away, store that in the bin. You can take off your gloves and a job well done. I would recommend before we go in and show you how to put out the slides out, get everything hooked up because as you can see that this slide wall will come over your tank. So you don't wanna be hooking this up under the slide wall. Once your slide wall is out, it's real easy to just get under here and just pull and not hook up. So hook all your connections up, get plugged in, get your black tank, get your sewer hooked up, get your water hooked up, and then you can go in and put down your stabilizer jacks and uh, put out your slide walls. We're gonna go over all of that when we go inside, but we do have a couple more bays that we do wanna show you here. This is your propane tank. A Couple of things to point out here. You do have an on-off valve, you have a gauge, you have a bleeder valve, and your fill valve. And you can get this filled anywhere they fill propane. The same place you go and take and get your gas uh, filled at the hardware store, they can, they can fill that for you. This isn't that big. I have taken one of these on vacation and I have used it as my daily driver to the grocery store. I park it on the side of the street. It's really convenient for that. And again, that's where you wanna keep that uh, generator on. It's parked on the side of the street. You're going out enjoying your day. You have your propane on to uh, take, a, you know, use the gas stove when you come back for lunch. Just make sure it's on. Uh, the first time they do fill this, they are gonna purge it because there's air in it. It's a new tank, so it's gonna take a little bit longer, maybe a little bit more propane and do take note on your travels. Uh, check ahead if you're going through bridges or tunnels. A lot of them do not allow your propane tank to be on, so you are going to have to turn that off. Otherwise, turn it on because you do need it for your water heater, you need it for your cooktop, and you need it for your furnace. Our last bay over here, a couple things going on. Nice little storage bay here. Again, the nice rotocast. You, you have the drain right here. Uh, I wouldn't put a lot of wet items in here. This is where we talked about that fuse box relocation for uh, your engine components. That's right up here on the wall. You can lift the tabs, you can fold that down. It's clearly labeled inside. This is your automotive style fuses here. So if there's something that's not working, come down here and check it. Then you have your driver's mirror right here. You can adjust the bottom part out here manually. Again, inside, you can adjust the heated mirrors. And this is the side view camera for your driver's side that when you turn on your left directional will 
spray down the side so you can see everything that is to your left when you are making that turn. Now it's time to go around and tour a couple of the floor plans and show you how all the features and functions work. But first we'll go in, we'll put out that slide wall, and we'll set up camp. Now we're inside, we are all connected and we want to put out our slide rooms and set up camp. That's where you're going to use Rapid Camp Plus. You're all in one control center. What's great about this is you can use it from you can use it from the touch screen, you can use it from your phone or your tablet. There are a number of remotes on the wall as well. You're going to download the RV Master app, okay? Once that is on your phone, you pair it. You just go over here where it says pair and it'll take you through the pairing process and you go ahead and pair it up. We have a complete walkthrough on how to use Rapid Camp Plus with Tommy, the technologically challenged dinosaur. Um, it's a great video and it really does walk you through step by step on how to use this. So to put out your slides, what you're going to do is go down to the slide button right here and everything is clearly labeled uh, from your slides, your awnings, your stabilizer jacks, which you can put down um, when you are set up before you put out your awning. So if we we're going to put down our stabilizer jacks, you go ahead and you hit lower on each side. Now these are not leveling jacks, these are stabilizer jacks. So what they are going to do is they will keep your motor home more stable when you are walking around. Uh, if you are a little, eh, a little slanted that way, you can probably put the side down a little more and get to a little more even, but again, they are stabilizer jacks and not leveling jacks. So we are over here going to put out our slide. Couple of things to note, because we are plugged in, you're good on power. Now, if you're dry camping, start your generator okay make sure that you have the right amount of voltage uh, to put the slides out because you don't want them stopping and getting out of sync so we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit the extend button on our slides and we're going to go ahead and put these out again these are two motors that just come in and out sometimes you will get them out of sync maybe you left something on the floor maybe you don't uh, didn't turn your generator on or you don't have the power and it stops until it builds the voltage to put it all the way out they will get out of sync and it is real easy to sync them back up. They went out perfect right there. And you heard that little noise at the end. When you're done putting them out, just hold that button down for just a few seconds, okay? That way you can make sure that they have all gone out. Now, in the event that the room's just a little bit of cock, a little cockeyed here, you just six noise, one, two, three, four, five, six, and you'll hear a little noise and they will sync right back up. In the event that they uh, are completely out of whack, you can find in one of the storage bays, and it is very, it's very—it's different on the floor plans, there's a little box, and it will tell you it's the control module. You go ahead, there's a flashing light on there, and it's gonna flash a code. You reset that, one, two, three, four, five, six, on the seventh, you hold it, the light will turn green, that will release the motors, and then you can go ahead and resync those, come in here, and they should operate. In the event you need to manually put them in, there are two plugs. You'll unplug those, and then you should be able, you and a couple of buddies uh, at the campground can go ahead and push that wall, and then you plug the motors back in. But again, we have a complete troubleshooting guide on that if you need to. But now we have all of our slides out. Uh, there's a lot to talk about in here. This is a new Ford chassis. They updated the interior with the dashboard and we have a new radio system in here. So we're gonna go ahead and spin around, sit down and walk you through how to use it. A lot of great changes up front. We're gonna start with the controls over here, move over to the dash and then move over to your infotainment center. Over here, you have a nice place for your phone. You have your heated remote mirrors work just like they do in your car. Hit mirror heat, you have heated mirrors, right? Take the frost off in the morning or the fog. Another cup holder here. You have fog lights up front. Turn those on right there. You have headlights, auto headlights. You can turn that all the way to auto and then just like that, auto headlights. When it is dark enough out, they will turn on. You have a vent right here and an auxiliary start, which is really a great feature to have in the event something happens and you do something and your, uh, your, your chassis battery is not starting. You can press this in, you turn the key and it will take and use power from your house batteries to start your motor home and that's the way that they're wired you can also reverse the process so if you ever need that auxiliary start again we have a great video on how to use that moving to the steering wheel here and the dashboard new design new layout you have a nice digital gauge here real easy to read you can adjust the brightness over here by where your headlight controls are um, cruise control 
and you have a number of different menus, okay? You have two trip meters that you can go through. You can take a check of your fuel economy, how many miles to empty, how many miles you have on the motorhome. You have some driver uh, assist functions. You can see how many hours you have on your engine. Scrolling down, there are some settings you can customize, display settings. So a couple of great features over here. You have another vent, you have your hazard lights, you have traction control. You have a nightshade that you can put down. It's only going to go down part way because the motor's on, but this is how you um, put this down at night for privacy. These curtains actually pull over as well. So you put this down, you pull these, and that is how you get your privacy shades at night. Starting your generator, we talked about uh, we talked about that a little bit uh, outside, but you can do it from right here too. So you just hold this button down to prime it. And when it is primed, that will let, see how it's lit up. Now you are ready to start your generator. You also have a button for your over-the-cab lights, which are right up ahead, uh, right up above. A couple of 12 volts here. All right, this is new V8. Maybe you're going to plug in a radar detector. You can do that right there. Maybe charge a couple of devices. HVAC controls, a place for your phone, and some US, a USB port, which is tied into the radio because this radio does indeed have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. This is an Android device. So let's go ahead and get this fired up. And here we go, Android Auto Time. There you go. You press the button. You can talk to it. Hello. Unmuting voice guidance. So it's voice activated. You can use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Uh, moving, let me unplug this. Moving back to our home screen, you have a radio, so you can dial local radio channels there. You have Sirius XM satellite radio. Get your subscription. Anything you want to listen to, you can find on Sirius XM. There's your Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You have Bluetooth phone and Bluetooth audio. You simply pair your phone. Camera, this is the camera behind you. You're not getting a signal because the motorhome is not on. When the motorhome is on and running, that will power up the camera. And moving through, you can do uh, your equalizer. You can set the clock from here because it is not 347 in the morning, January 13th. We don't work at 347. We quit at 345. Uh, your settings, you can do your date, your time, that's where you set all that. But really a great system, how to use it, you can dim your screen here. You can find um, on your manual, uh, you can see you got uh, your voice connected. Use that for your voice when you're connected to your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Go back home, your volume button, uh, you have a USB slot here, a micro SD card slot here. So a lot of great features over here. If you move to the passenger side here uh, in just a second, you see these seats swivel. There's a flip-up dash workstation that is a really great feature. I'm going to hop over there and we'll show you all the great features on that. So this is a great place for the passenger. This is your flip-out dash workstation. You can see you can store cell phone up here. You have a, a air vents here and 110 plug volt plugs down there to plug in if you pull this out and maybe you want to put a laptop here or a tablet and post some pictures from the road maybe do some work spin around uh, these seats do swivel so if you're in this way you can use this if you're this way there's a table that goes here we'll show you in a little bit here but you can stay connected on the road and this is a great feature all of our products have the WineGuard Connect uh, 2.0 4G hotspot and Wi-Fi extender. It's a little antenna on the roof, and you can get a data plan. You can put in your own SIM card. It's really, really easy to do. And you download the app, and then you connect that way. Now you are on the road. You have a Wi-Fi signal, which is really great, especially when we get into some of the entertainment options here. You can stream to the TV if you have a streaming device. You can use it for that. So this is a great little multi. I mean, the kids will want it sit here and eat breakfast, right? This is, uh, this is what my wife uses when we are out. Uh, when we use a motorhome, she uses this. When one of uh, me or the, my daughters are in the bathroom, she uses this to get ready. She calls it the Tracy station, so it makes a little vanity. So something to think about there, ladies. You have a cup holder here. Uh, these windows do open. They have screens, so you can get some ventilation on a day like today. It's, it's just beautiful out. Just open the windows. Uh, get a nice breeze. You also have an overhead bunk, so we're going to show you how to work that. I'm going to spin these chairs around because they need to be facing forward and lean back. We're going to set that up, show you how to lower your bunk. So to put down your overhead bunk, the first thing you want to do is make sure that your chairs are lean back. There are two pins on each side. You're going to go ahead and pull each pin. Going to go over to your Rapid Camp Plus module, and you're going to go to your slide screen and it will be called bunk lift. You're going to go to the lower button, hold it down, 
and away you go, just like that. 500 pound capacity for this. There is a ladder so the kids can climb up. Notice there's a nice safety net around here too to keep everybody safe and secure. And you can see how low it goes. This is why we lean the, the chairs back. And now you have a bunk. In the morning, you simply hit the raise button. You lift your bunk back up. You can spin your chairs around. You can set up your table. And you have a great living area. But having this overhead bunk is a fantastic feature. My oldest daughter always gets the overhead bunk. My youngest always takes either the, the sofa or the dinette. When the bunk is all the way up, all you're going to do is walk on over and put your pins right back into place to keep it nice and safe and secure until the next time you are ready to use it. Now we're going to flip around and show you the rest of your living area. So your Axis or Vegas is equipped with a television. And in this floor plan, it happens to be right here. You also have one sometimes in the bedroom. Something to take note of. If you want to watch over the air channels, wherever you are, maybe you want to catch the local forecast, inside you're going to have a box here, a wine guard box. Make sure that the little light is green. That way you can use local over the air channels and your TV is set to tune that. If you want to use the cable that we showed you how to hook up, Press that button, make sure the light is not lit. Make sure the light is off. Then you can take and program your television to use all the cable channels at the park. There's also an HDMI cord if you want to hook up a streaming device or maybe a video game console. That's tied into the TV as well. So you really have a lot of entertainment options out here. Here we are in the kitchen. This is well equipped. Everything you need is here for great meals while you are on the road. You have counter space here. A nice cover for your single bowl sink. You have a flip up countertop extension. You have a pull down sprayer. You have your gas cooktop. This lights just like your cooktop at home. If you use gas, make sure your propane is on. We showed you how to do that. You hit light, you have flames. You are cooking with gas. You have a lot of storage up above here. Down here, this is your baking and uh, broiling option. This is a convection microwave. Works just like your regular oven. You go ahead, you set your temperature to 350 degrees, you throw your cookies in there, and 10 minutes later you have ooey gooey delicious chocolate chip cookies. We do have an entire YouTube channel dedicated to cooking in your motorhome. It is called Mobile Meals. Check it out. Some great recipes. You're going to get some great ideas. You also have a lot of storage here. Your remotes are in here. You have a number of drawers down below. So a lot of great uh, features and options for you here in the kitchen. When you are ready to eat your meal, we're going to walk over to the other side. We're going to show you how to set up the table and enjoy the sofa. So we're relaxing on the comfortable sofa or watching TV, but we want to get set up for a meal. I'm going to show you how to set up the table here. We do have right behind here, it is snapped in. We do have your tabletop. So a nice little storage place here. I'm going to go ahead and set that down. And then I am going to grab in this closet. We do have your table legs. They store real nice and easy. And what you want to do is loosen up the base, twist it into place, and then you simply tighten it down. Same with the other leg. Into place. Fit it into the slots and tighten it down. And you put your table right into place here. And now you have a nice handy place to sit, right? You're sitting here and you are enjoying life. You're opening the vents and you're letting in the breeze. I do want to talk about real quick though, uh, about your air conditioning unit. It's something we didn't get to talk about when we were doing the temperature check on the uh, multiplex wiring system. On a day like today, here in Indiana at the factory, it's nice, it's cool, you can open the windows. But where you are, it may be roasting hot. You don't want to take your air conditioning units and set the inside temperature. You don't want to set your thermostat more than 10 to 15 degrees below the ambient temperature. So let's say that outside it is 90 degrees. You don't want to set it at 70 degrees because you're not going to be able to take that 20 degrees out of the air. 
uh, you're going to end up freezing up your coils and causing just an insufferable evening of uh, a hot, sweaty night. What you want to do is set it, say it's 90 degrees outside, go ahead and set it at 80. When it gets to 80 degrees, then you can slowly bring it down. But to avoid that altogether, when you wake up in the morning or in the evening when it's cool, what I like to do is set it when I'm driving. I have the uh, generator on. I start the trip generally in the morning. And again, it's a morning thing. You set your temperature, say maybe you like your motorhome at 70. Set it to 70 degrees. Set your thermostat at 70. That is the best way. So when it heats throughout the day, your air conditioning unit will be able to keep up with that. So make sure you're following those guidelines so you don't freeze up your air conditioner. All right, we have talked about a number of great uh, features here in the kitchen. And you know what? We didn't show you that this makes into a bed. I think we should probably do that. So go ahead and what you want to do is you move your table out of the way. You can go ahead and I'll just set this over here, but normally you would go ahead and put that right back behind the couch. And you move your legs because you have great sleeping options. We showed you the overhead bunk. All right, so you're going to take and you're going to remove your cushions. You're going to hand them to Tom. Tom does not come with every motorhome. He is an option, a very expensive option. You can order uh, your own Tom online. Not off the Thor Motor Coach website. It's one of those black market deals. Uh, you can do that if you want. There are the legs. They come out and you simply take, lift, and pull your bed out. And then you fold this back down. You can put your cushions back there if you want, but here you go. Easy just as that. I mean, this is a nice size, nice soft bed. So that is how you make up the couch into the bed. I want to talk a little bit about your refrigerator here. This has a great feature where it's, I think of it as a smart fridge. Go ahead and turn it on. Okay. And you have the option of choosing auto or gas. If you want to run strictly on propane, choose gas. If you want to put it on auto, put it on auto. I would recommend auto because that will uh, go ahead and change the mode from gas to electric when you're plugged in. So when you're driving down the road, if your generator is on and you're on auto, it will run. If you're dry camping somewhere and you're not allowed to have your generator on, and there are certain parks where you can't use it, then it will run off your propane if you're not plugged in. And then when you are plugged in, it will run off electric. So go ahead and set that to auto. You have your freezer up above. You have your fridge down below. Your temperature control is uh, right over there. And another item I want to point out is right down here. It is your converter. It is your fuse box. This is your central processing unit, okay? We make this so it is always accessible to you. In this motorhome, it happens to be here. In some motorhomes, it happens to be in the bedroom. What happens here, the converter is going to take power from the generator. It's going to take power from the shore power. It's going to run it right through here and it is going to send 110 volts to the appliances that need 110. It's going to send 12 volts to items like your lights that need 12 volts. Okay, so let's say something's not working. Let's say your microwave's not working, or let's say your fridge isn't working. What you want to do is come back here and make sure that the breakers or the fuses are not tripped. Now, these are going to be breakers, just like you're going to find in your home. These are automotive style fuses, okay? So, you got a chart that tells you what everything is, your front AC, your microwave, your GFCI. You have GFCI outlets in here. I know you have one in your bathroom. Let's say that you plug something in out here and it's not working. Go into the bathroom, find the GFCI, reset it. Nine times out of 10, that is going to take and reset the outlet. You can also come back here and see, oh, okay, oh, yeah, it was tripped. And then you go ahead and you reset it. So something that is very important here, and whether you are, especially if you're replacing your 12-volt fuses or you uh, need to replace a breaker, make sure that you are using the exact replacement. So say you're pulling out a 15-amp fuse, don't throw in a 30-amper and don't go the other way. Don't pull out a 30 and throw in a 15. Same over here. These are all 15. Then your main, your microwave is on a, your main is a 30. You also have your microwave on a 20. So just make sure that everything is correct. But this is your converter. This is your fuses and breakers. This is the brand new 24.3 in the gorgeous home collection here. We talked about a ladder for the bunk does come with a ladder. We talked about a pedestal table that we had stored in the closet in, uh, and it'll be stored in the closet here as well. This is what it looks like when you have it all set up with your swivel captain's chair. So very, very nice. Different couch setup over here. You have the nice sofa, but this is a Murphy bed. Watch how easy this is to use. 
A number of Thor motorhomes are equipped with this great manual Murphy bed. And we're gonna show you how to use it. Very easy to use, very comfortable. First thing you're gonna do is take and you're going to remove your cushions and set them off to the side. This is going to be the bar you remove. This is like the, your foot stand here. Simply pull down the latch, pull this forward, set it down, make that all pretty for you. And look at that, you have a nice, comfortable Murphy bed. In the morning you wake up, you don't even have to make this thing. No, you don't. You just put this back into place, you fold the support down, clip that into place, you grab your cushions, back into place right there. You sit down, you can set your table up, and you can have a wonderful, wonderful time. And that is how easy it is to work the new Murphy bed. When this is in couch position, this table sets up just like we just, just showed you there. You have the legs and the tabletop. New for this floor plan, you have a little dinette. This is great. You have seat belts over there. Look at this, nice campsite, little table for two. This is really a great setup. And if you have a little one with you, trick little feature, you move your little T set, if you will. There's a little screw down below. You can go ahead and undo that. This just lifts right off, just like this. You can take the whole thing out. All right, you move that off to the side. You lift up the support rod. You're going to want to lift your cushions up. Take your table. Set that back down right there on the grooves. And if you, like I said, you have you know, a little grandkid staying with you, a small child, look at that. Nice little, just a, a different little place for them to sleep. So a great setup if you have, have guests coming with you. Great kitchen setup in here as well. We showed you how the kitchen works. The only thing left to do is to show you the wonderful bathroom. Last stop on our tour is the bathroom, and this is set up like your home. You have your sink, you have nice large medicine cabinets, you have storage for towels, for guests, little cubbies for everything. You have the shower skylight, which is really, really nice for your sink, and actually throughout the motorhome, your hot water is controlled through. Remember we showed you outside the hot water heater right here is where you control it. You turn it on with the red button. You can control your temperature up or down. You can get to the exact temperature that you want. You like your showers hot, up, like them a little cooler, go ahead and turn that down. So that's how easy that is to use. The final thing we need to talk about, the old commode, right? I am sitting on the RUV throne. A couple of things to take note of. Your toilet paper is here, but what kind of toilet paper you're gonna put there? You're going to put either marine or RV specific toilet paper. Don't put, you know, your Cottonelle four ply, the kind that the bears like, okay? Bear, the bears will clog this toilet and you have never want to unclog a bear jam. That is not a lot of fun. Make sure you're using the right toilet paper. Now, there is a foot flush right here. Go ahead, push it down just a little bit. Get the water into get the water into the bowl here. Make sure your water pump is on if you are dry camping. Otherwise, you're fine. Once you get some water in the bowl, go ahead, do what you gotta do, all right? Make like a bear in the woods. When you're done, then you can go ahead and you can flush all the way. You can clean everything out and we showed you how to drain your tank, but make sure you are taking proper care of your toilet. You can also take, there are a number of different chemicals you can pour down there to, to help in the tank. You can throw a cooler full of ice if you're done and you're heading to your next place. The ice will go around and, and get everything loose. So that is how you use your toilet and that is the bathroom. We only have one more thing to talk about and that is our warranty. As we wrap up, the last thing I want to talk to you about is this black bag your motorhome will come with. Inside, a lot of great information. We have talked about a number of items on here. You're going to want to follow everything in your warranty guide to make sure that you keep up with your 12-year structural, 6-year lamination, and 1-year limited warranty, best warranty in the business. We talk about reading your owner's manual. Here you go. This is the owner's manual you're going to want to thumb through. It takes you through a lot of the features here, battery disconnect, uh, just everything, the emergency start, a uh, little troubleshooting, proper tire wear. We talked about how important your tire maintenance is. So go ahead 
and read that through. You're also going to have manuals for everything in here and warranty cards for everything in here. Okay, so uh, from, your, from your radio to your TV to your tankless hot water, make sure you read the manuals. Uh, there are certain things that have warranty cards. You're going to want to fill those out and send those in to make sure you keep up with the warranty there. Uh, your spare key is also going to be in here as well. On the main key ring, you're going to find your ignition key along with uh, two sets of all your storage bay keys, but there is the spare key in here. And one other thing that I would advise you as a, as a new owner, or if you are a current owner, go ahead to thormotorcoach.com, click over on the owner's resources tab, and it's really just chock full of information. And if you sign up, you type in the VIN number, you're gonna get the specifics for your coach. You're gonna get all the build information, what components are in there, serial numbers. If you need schematics for plumbing or electrical, you can get all of that right there. So head to the owner's resources page. It is really a great source of information. You'll find quick start guides there in case you have any questions on anything that we cover. Also, go over and subscribe to our YouTube channel as if you're watching this and you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, it's a great way to keep up with the latest customer service videos, uh, some troubleshooting guides, the latest model changes. Everything we do at Thor Motor Coach is going to be there from a video perspective. So enjoy your trip wherever you head in your RUV and have a great time because that's what it is all about. And we'll see you again soon.